more immersion, deeper immersion. That's what I was looking to experience when I'm looking for the best PS5 headset. I have a $2,000 full Sonos surround sound set up here in my living room and I still reach for any one of these five headsets when I'm looking to really get fully immersed in a game, lose all sense of space, time, and just really enjoy the game at hand. That means all of these are a great value when you consider the fact that I'm pushing them up against a $2,000 surround sound system. And I think they immerse me more. Quick disclaimer, I'm not an audiophile, not an audio engineer, and this is not an in-depth review on any of these headsets. I'm just highlighting what might make me want to choose one over the other and why. And I'll do this by classifying them as a winner of one of three attributes. I have best overall headset, best value headset, and the best sound quality headset. And this is just from the perspective of a PlayStation casual gamer, emphasis on the casual, who plays a decent amount of Call of Duty multiplayer not Warzone and story games like GTA 5, Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, Spider-Man, etc, etc. You know the drill with the PlayStation exclusives. I do like using different headsets though when gaming because variety is the spice of life. On that note, bought these all with my own money so you can trust that the opinion here, I don't know if it's unbiased but it's my honest opinion. This channel isn't big enough to get sent anything. A like on the video and a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Also if you're gonna buy any of these, if you use the links down below that would be greatly appreciated as well. Only if you find the video valuable of course. What's up everybody? Welcome back to safe buys i'm safe and we'll start off with the newest addition to the lineup here the long awaited undisputed playstation pulse elite headset i'm not going to waste any of your time right up front this one is the winner for best value headset and why is that because at 150 dollars this is the cheapest out of the bunch the others they range all the way up to like 300 dollars or even more this one's still providing a lot at that 150 dollar value you can say it's the best bang for your buck it's no skimp neither i'm gonna tell you all the pros that make it an exceptional headset despite its low price point. One, you get exceptional sound quality where if you have not tried planar magnetic drivers headsets, which is the new technology that Sony's using on the PlayStation Elite and the PlayStation Explore earbuds, it is an absolute treat. Basically, there is clarity and detail in the mids and highs on these planar magnetic drivers that are just, in my opinion, they outclass the highs and mids on anything like the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros or the Steel Series Arctis Nova Pros, which use dynamic drivers, though those ones are better for bass. Okay, if you want bass, go with dynamic drivers. If you care more about highs and mids and clarity, I would go with the Planar Magnetics. This is not the only Planar Magnetic driver headset that we'll walk through. Number two, it's the best simultaneous Bluetooth and wireless 2.4 gigahertz connection out of all of these headsets. Not only is it seamless, but the audio mixing between game and music has a level of refinement to it in comparison to the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros and the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro, which also have simultaneous Bluetooth connection. This one's just more refined. That is to say, I feel like when I'm playing Call of Duty, I can still hear the footsteps and the explosions and where the gunshots are coming from, even while listening to music, whereas that's not the case with the other ones. The other one's a little bit more muddied. I feel like the audio is not as well separated. And yeah, that's just, I like to play WWE theme songs while I'm playing Call of Duty sometimes. You know, play a little bit of a Batista theme song, Kane. Shawn Michaels just gets you pumped up while you're gaming. Number three, this has the tightest integration with the PlayStation UI where three presses on the power button here, down here, will open up the PlayStation UI and from there you can adjust the EQ, you can uh, change the game chat mix, adjust all your settings. Granted, some might prefer the phone app experience which allows you to do it without pausing your game at all on some of these other headsets. But this is also the only over ear headset that can connect directly to your PlayStation portal. So if you have a PlayStation portal, that's a major W there. You don't have to connect connect to your PS5, or if you're outside of the home, you can use this with your PlayStation Portal, no problem, nor near your PS5. Also, the long-awaited PS5 Pro is coming out in 2024, that's rumored, and hopefully that has PlayStation Link built into it as well. So if that does, then this will be able to work with the PlayStation Pro without a dongle. We've all been waiting for this dongle list future because I don't want to have anything sticking out of my PS5. I don't want to have to keep putting it in and out and risk losing it. That could be a major benefit for PlayStation Link proprietary software, at least one that I would appreciate more than the current benefits it provides which is just, I think, less latency in the audio. Number four, it has a great mic and a fantastic noise cancellation, so you can chew, do whatever background activities you like without annoying your friends. Eat your Doritos, drink your Mountain Dew. You're not disturbing anyone. That's more of a benefit for them than you, but I thought I would call it out. Number five, we have great comfort straight out the box. So clamping force isn't too tight. It is pleather. I find my ears don't get too hot too quick, and I'm someone whose ears get really hot in over-ear headsets. It takes at least an hour for my ears to get hot in these. I think it's because the clamping force isn't too tight on my head. If you have a wider head, maybe that won't be the same for you. Straight out of the box. This is one of the only ones that I prefer actually straight out of the box versus adding uh, cushions to it. Granted, you can't even add wicked cushions to this because the thing is soldered on. I'll talk about that in the cons. Number six, sixth pro is to ensure the battery life is always top 
topped up. It comes with an advertised 30 hours of battery life on a single charge. To ensure it stays topped up, they also give you this handy little charging dock, which you can tag some 3M tape there or drill it over to your desk or your wall or what have you. Attach the USB-C cable down there, plop your prongs onto the headset here. Bam, it's hanging like this. You got your headset ready to go, topped up and charged. This also works with your PlayStation DualSense controller, be that the DualSense Edge or the DualSense regular. It's pretty sturdy, so you get an extra charger at the same $150 price point. So a lot of value here, hence why this is winning best overall value headset. And finally, number seven, it has an aesthetic quality to it that just screams PlayStation. Personally, I'm all about this black and white action, the color design. Granted, it does sort of make your head look like an egg, I think. What do you think? I think it gives you sort of an egg head shape, which you may or may not like, but then again, I wasn't planning on using this outside of gaming at all, so keep that in mind. Probably not gonna wanna wear these outside, or if you are actually wearing these outside, let me know. I'm curious if there's people that are actually doing that. But since this is not a perfect headset, there are some standout cons. Number one, of course, is that the ear cups on these are not replaceable, to my knowledge, as of right now, because they are soldered on there. There's no way to really remove them. I don't know if Wicked Cushions will come up a way to replace these. And if they don't, then these really become a disposable set of headsets, because if you use them daily for like two years or something, I imagine it will eventually wear. Or maybe not. I don't know. You tell me if you end up using it for that long. I've personally never worn gaming headsets long enough to wear them out for I usually upgrade well before then. They should have made it replaceable like all the other headsets are replaceable and you can use Wicked Cushions, Freeze Wicked Cushions, which help keep your ears cooler for longer on all the other headsets. Number two, second biggest con, there's a bit of distortion when listening to music at higher volumes. These are volumes, honestly, that I wouldn't be listening to in general, but if you prefer listening to your music at higher volumes, you might not appreciate the distortion that comes along with that on this headset. Number three, you can't control your phone's volume nor play pause via the headset via Bluetooth. And this makes sense why it's like this when you're playing your game you want to be able to control your game volume and everything like that but not your phone's volume while you're gaming but when you're using it just with your phone it's annoying like if i leave my phone somewhere and i want to pause whatever's playing or i want to increase decrease the volume can't do that you have to go grab your phone from wherever it happens to be sitting in your house at the time Just another con for the Pulse Elite. Now this hasn't happened to me, but some people using the Pulse Elite on the PlayStation 5 Slim, when they plug the USB-A dongle in the back of the PlayStation, because the PS5 Slim only has the USB-A ports in the back, it causes connection issues in some cases. And that's allegedly on account of the fact that it gets really hot behind the PS5 Slim. So if you are plugging this in the back of your PS5 Slim, you might run into connection issues based on what I'm hearing just online in general. The solution to that is if you have a fat PS5. Like if you have the old PS5, you could just put it in the USB-A port in the front and then you don't have to worry about the overheating. But I also imagine if your PS5 Slim is in a place where there's enough airflow in the back of it, like it's not enclosed from the back. Mine kind of is and I keep this plugged into the back and I haven't had any issues like in the TV stand. But I don't know. We're going to have to just account for that. Some people are reporting that there's issues. Maybe if I play for an extended period of time, maybe if I'm playing for like five hours straight, this will get super hot and I'll run into the connection issues maybe that's the case but i definitely these days i'm not playing for five hours straight i'll tell you that much well, for what it is that's a con on the playstation pulse elite with the ps5 slim of course if the ps5 pro comes out then hopefully they have the playstation link technology in the ps5 pro and then you don't have to worry about overheating anything which is what they should have done with the ps5 slim considering how close this playstation link technology was launched next to the ps5 slim but anyway that's a story for another day that's the playstation pulse elite that's it great value like i said a lot of people might want to go for this one. Now, per special request from some of my viewers on my previous videos, let's talk about the Pulse Elite versus the Pulse Explorer. This comparison makes sense because these are both the new headsets from Sony. I mean, PlayStation, the verdict there is if you're okay with over-ear headsets, I don't see why you wouldn't go with the PlayStation Pulse Elite. 
Number one, it gets louder. Number two, it has a better mic that goes up right in front of your face. Whereas obviously the Pulse Explorer microphones don't go straight up in front of your face and gets louder. And also you can triple tap the power button to go to the PlayStation menu, which Pulse Explorer can't do. But then again, the Pulse Explorer are more portable. If you're going outside, maybe you'd prefer these. Plus if you already have a pair of over-ear gaming headset, maybe you'd want to go for the earbuds. I do have a video for that. I'll link it at the end of this one where I go through the best PS5 earbuds and you can check that out at the end. If you're finding any of this useful so far, a like on the video would be extremely appreciated and a subscribe if you're interested in more content like this, of course. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. Also, before I forget, keep in mind as I go through the rest of these headsets, you technically don't need to buy any gaming specific headset if you just buy this 20 to $30 USB-C Avon Tree wireless dongle, which will allow you to pair not just one, but any two wireless Bluetooth headsets that you might already own to your PS5 at the same time. The gaming quality might not be as nice as buying a gaming specific headset but in my experience it's good enough especially if you're just a casual gamer and people do say that this has increased latency versus these gaming options and I would believe that but honestly I can't tell the difference in latency between using this on my AirPods Pro or using my AirPods Max with this I get amazing active noise cancelling and I can't tell the difference in latency to be honest but the sound quality I definitely prefer the gaming headsets for gaming sound when playing on the PlayStation but yeah keep in mind if you want to save some money maybe just buy this $30 dongle link in the description now for the winner of the best overall headset it's gonna have to go to the turtle beach stealth pros which takes the win for me over the steel series arctis nova pro from last year and this is because of a few reasons number one is gotta be the fact that this has the most seamless and well thought out app experience on your phone to control your eq and anything else while gaming and not having to pause the game so i can be gaming call of duty and change the eq real quick on my phone without pausing the game whereas if i'm using the pulse elite for example i know i have to triple tap on the thing and then i gotta figure out the EQ without being in the game specifically that I'm trying to EQ the headset for, which can be problematic, right? It means you can't get as fine-tuned of an EQ as you can on the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros. Number two, the sound quality is exceptionally versatile with the ability to modify the EQ separately for the Bluetooth connection and the gaming wireless 2.4 gigahertz connection, which makes sense because more often than not, you're probably gonna want an EQ for your game that's different from your music preferences on your phone. This will allow you to fine-tune the EQ on each one separately in a beautiful app, honestly. You probably wouldn't appreciate the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro app until you see the other app offerings here. I don't think the Arctis Nova Pro has an app on the iPhone. I think it's only computer and the dock that they give you with it. And the Odyssey app is just not anywhere near as clean as the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro. And also it might come down to preference, but a lot of people might prefer the more bassy sound that comes out of the dynamic drivers. And these have like the best bassy sound out of all the headsets we're gonna talk about. So if you prefer bass, definitely go with the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros out of all the headsets we're reviewing. Have I tried all gaming headsets no but these are the ones that i found that were the best so that's why i bought the best and by the way if you know of any headsets that are really good as well that i haven't covered here i just love buying gaming headsets so let me know in the description maybe i'll buy that one too so yeah if you prefer bass turtle beach stealth pros for you number three honestly this headset has a lot more going for it and i don't want to spend too much time going in depth high level what's amazing about this headset has an amazing battery life i don't know what the quoted hours are but it has hot swappable batteries so you basically have infinite battery life because it comes with a little dock thing and then you could just replace the battery and put it in here so you essentially have infinite battery life and it has great comfort right out the box it also has replaceable ear cups so i've got the wicked cushions freeze uh, ear cups here again links in the description of that highly recommend if your ears get hot like me uh, your ears get super hot in any over your headsets pretty quick also it has great controls on the bottom here that are textured textured controls so you can differentiate uh, what you're pressing on and it also has active noise canceling so of the headsets we're reviewing the steel series Arctis Nova Pro has it but uh, spoiler I'm not awarding it anything in this uh, video because all these other headsets came out after it so they technically had more time to look at the cons of the Steel Series and sort of improve on them without going into that the active noise cancelling on this is decent but does it come anywhere near the AirPods Pro Max or even the AirPods Pro or the Sony WH-1000 XM5s or the Bose QC45s no it doesn't come anywhere near the active noise cancelling of that which is why I almost always keep the active noise cancelling off because I can barely tell if it's on and audio files say it messes with the sound a bit although <laughs> I can't even tell if it's on or off most of the time and this is with an AC running in the background of course there's in-depth reviews out there that might give you more technical tests if you're interested in that I don't know I'm not impressed with the noise cancelling but yeah Turtle Beach Stealth Pros these are the overall best PS5 headset in my book at least as of the day of filming this
Now on to the winner of the best sound quality, a super subjective attribute, mind you, because one, not only does everyone hear things differently, but two, everyone has different preferences for sound quality in general. Some might prefer more bass, some might prefer clarity and highs and mids. For me, I fall in the latter camp, so I prefer the highs and mids and the clarity over having more bass, and that's both for my music and for gaming, so it works out that way. Plus, I feel like for hearing footsteps and stuff like that, the planar magnetics is just the clarity. For me, I can hear it a lot better footsteps and directionality and stuff like that in Call of Duty at least and Destiny 2 actually Destiny it's pretty good too but if you perform more bass definitely go with the Turtle Beach Stealth Pros because I don't think the bass on these or the Sony Pulse Elites or any planar magnetic headsets is gonna satisfy your needs or at least planar magnetic gaming headsets of the ones I'm reviewing today. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. But yeah, the best sound and quality goes to the Odyssey Maxwell over here. At twice the price of the Pulse Elite headset, it delivers a fidelity and sound that is considerably better, though I wouldn't go so far as to say that the Odyssey Maxwell sounds twice as good as the PlayStation Pulse Elite. It definitely sounds at least one and a half times as good. That just goes to show you, it's twice the price. There is usually diminishing value as you go higher in price in any tech-related product. But yeah, the sound quality is amazing amazing in Call of Duty, multiplayers, it's also amazing in Ghost of Tsushima, God of War, Grand Theft Auto 5. These also have an easy to use app on your iPhone or Android so you can adjust the EQ on the fly while you're playing, though it's not quite as well thought out as the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro app as I mentioned earlier. You can't set a different EQ for your music listening needs and your game or your wireless 2.4 gigahertz connection. However, there are some potential deal breakers here with the Odyssey Maxwells. What you should know is there's no simultaneous Bluetooth and wireless connection. This is to say you cannot simultaneously listen to audio from your phone and the PlayStation at the same time, which is a feature even the older Odyssey Penrose has, which I still really enjoy using, by the way. I think this has a sound of its own. You just might have a hard time finding it. This allows simultaneous Bluetooth connection. Granted, the app is finicky for this. I don't think they're supporting it anymore, and I'm pretty sure you're gonna have a hard time finding this for sale anyway. The Odyssey Penrose. So what does it offer instead, the Odyssey Maxwell? It definitely has Bluetooth capability and extremely high quality connection options. So I'm not an audiophile, but it's got like LE Bluetooth. Like it's got really high codecs that it supports. And to me, listening on Apple Music through these, through Bluetooth connection, I love the sound quality. It is better than my AirPods Max. What is this, $500? These gaming headsets with their planar magnetic drivers sound better for music to me than that. It does have multi-point Bluetooth connection though. So if you want to connect to your laptop and your phone at the same time have it switch easily you could do that it's got that going for it just no simultaneous connection between your wireless like your playstation and your phone at the same time but i think if you do get a call while you're gaming it'll switch over to the phone call so it's smart enough to do that granted i haven't ever been in a scenario where that's actually worked if you have these uh, let me know if that works for you in the comments i'm kind of curious but second deal breaker might be that these are quite a bit heavier than other headsets but honestly for me i find the maxwell to be just as comfortable as any of the other headsets even despite its heavier weight. It's like, yeah, it'll shake off, might fall off, but I don't mind it while gaming in normal scenarios. Now that is the Maxwell, best sound quality in my book as someone who prefers crystal clear highs and mids and is pretty impartial to bass. I do like bass, but it's not mainly what I'm looking for. Now, just a few call outs or things to keep in mind when deciding. One, if you have the Odyssey Penrose over here, which they have since stopped selling, if you have this and you like it, I wouldn't say any of these other headsets are worth the upgrade from that, in my opinion. Unless, of course, you prefer changing up the sound like I do and you just want to have a bunch of different high quality headsets. And why is that? That's because the Odyssey Penrose, to me, I just love the sound of this for music. I love it for games. It has simultaneous Bluetooth and wireless connection. The app experience is extremely finicky. I don't know if they're still supporting it. There's a lot of complaints about build quality on this. Three-year-old headset, guys. For me, I've had it for about two years, I think, but honestly, I love it, and I've got the Freeze Wicked cushions on it. It's pretty comfortable. The clamping force might be a little tight, but anyway, this isn't a review on this, but if you have it, I don't think you'll be too impressed if you upgrade to any of the other ones. And second thing, in my last best PS5 headset video from a year ago, I went over headsets like the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro. I dove in depth on these. I went into the Sony InZone H9 and the Razer Barracuda. So I'll link that video in the description or somewhere, maybe in a pinned comment or something if you're interested in my opinion on those. But honestly, the Sony InZone H9 is a write off right off the bat compared to all these because its app is exclusive to PC. So unless you use PC, 
Plus, like, why would you want to connect it to your PC every time you want to adjust the EQ? Like, they should have a phone app or a way to adjust the EQ on that without having to do all that, right? So, to me, that's a write-off. The Razer Barracuda also was just sound quality-wise, can't touch any of these, or even in my previous video, couldn't touch any of those headsets neither. But yeah, I'm not going to pretend like I know of all the amazing headsets out there. These are the ones that, as someone who watches a lot of YouTube and watches a lot of YouTube gaming headset videos, these are the ones I landed on as being the best, and so I just pit them all against each other because I bought them all because I enjoy the difference in sound. Let's just say that. Another point actually, why did I not go into build quality for any of these? Cause honestly, I haven't had any issues with the build quality of any of them. Some of them are made of plastic. The Odyssey Max, most of them are made of plastic. The Odyssey Maxwell's got metal in it or aluminum. I don't know honestly what they're made of. You could probably look up on the description of the website, but I wouldn't decide on one over the other of any of these based on their build quality. Hence why I didn't talk about it. And anything else basically I didn't talk about or didn't emphasize like comfort. I think they're all fairly comfortable, especially if you add the Wicked Cushions freeze cushions on any of these, which I've added on all of them. All of these have Wicked Cushions uh, freeze cushions, link in the description. But yeah, anything I didn't mention in specific for any of these headsets is probably because it's good. Like the mic quality, for example, I think it's pretty good on all of these. I wouldn't choose one over another based on the mic quality alone. That's all just one man's opinion, guys. You can have your own opinions and I'm definitely interested to hear them in the comments. I'll respond to every comment because because honestly, there's not that many of them. So I actually enjoy responding to the comments. And finally, you might be wondering why didn't he talk about battery life too much? Well, that's because honestly, they're all more than plenty good on the battery life front in my book. Let's just consider the Pulse Elite has 30 hours, plus it's got its charging dock. The Turtle Beach Stealth Pros has hot swappable batteries, so essentially infinite battery life. The Odyssey Maxwell has like a 60 to 80 hour battery life, something crazy like that. So. I don't even think I've ever charged these. I don't think I did. And they're still going and I've had these for literally months on end since they came out pretty much. But then again, I do have a lot of different headsets and I use them all, so that could be why. Maybe the Odyssey Penrose, you might not be impressed with the battery life on that, but can't really find that anymore, like I said. Final thing to keep in mind is if your ears tend to get hot quickly with over-ear headsets, feel free to check out my other video talking about the best PS5 earbuds, which I'll link at the end of this. Earbuds obviously won't heat your ears, but they might be a little less comfortable being deeply lodged in your ear. Some of them are pretty comfortable though. You can watch that video if you're interested. So the Turtle Beach Stealth Pro is a safe buy. The PlayStation Pulse Elite is a safe buy. The Odyssey Maxwell is a safe buy. This is safe buys, and I'll catch you on the next video, guys. Peace.